And then I'm going to go live on LinkedIn. Stand by. Phillips got everything all set up. It's going to be doing a graphic recording of this call, which will be fantastic. And we are now live. All right. Well, hello, everyone out there. Thank you for tuning in. This is Virtual Coffee with Ben. My name is Ben Blackman. I am the Director of Development for Ridge, that's Royal Innovation Design Group, a group of innovation consultants based in St. Petersburg, Florida. Before we get started, as always, I want to encourage everybody out there to go to the Ridge YouTube channel and to our Facebook page to see all of the great content that we're putting out there. You can also schedule your own virtual coffee session with me. You can join the show or we can have a private conversation about how Ridge can help your company innovate more effectively. This show every Wednesday at 9 a.m. focuses on how companies strategically plan for the future, how they innovate, and how they create strong cultures for their employees. I'm super excited this morning to welcome everyone to my, my guest, to everyone. Her name is Jill St. Thomas. Jill is the Executive Director of Tampa Bay Tech. We are also joined by Philip Leslie, of course. He's one of Ridge's many visual strategists, and he's going to be doing a graphic record of today's show that we'll be posting afterwards. Hello, Philip. Thank you both for joining me today. Jill, uh, just for starters, I'm curious if you can give us some background on Tampa Bay Tech, um, what the organization's mission is, and your role as executive director, um, what your objectives are. I'd be happy to, and thank you for having me, Ben and Philip. I appreciate the opportunity. I love telling our story. So uh, this is actually the 20th year that Tampa Bay Tech has been serving the community of Tampa Bay. Uh, we started out as really a meetup for a lot of the founders in the area that were looking for, you know, peer sharing and opportunities to talk about their challenges and um, what was inspiring them to build businesses here. So we've evolved over the 20 years really to serve a larger, you know, sort of membership base. Our, our largest member is one of the largest companies in Florida, Tech Data. You may have heard of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we work, you know, with probably our smallest members, a 20 person development shop. So, you know, when we think about how to serve all of those types of members, um, it's very uh, important to be thinking about sort of where everyone is in their journey, where everyone is in terms of, you know, the, the sort of lifespan of their business. So um, our, our mission of a few years is to build a radically connected technology community in Tampa Bay. So when I think about my role as the executive director, it's really thinking about uh, and being constantly challenged about what does that mean? What does radically connected mean to you? It's different for you, it's different for me, it's different for uh, Philip. So uh, that to me is one of the sort of ongoing um, uh, things that sort of drives me every day. Uh, a little bit of background, which I think is important about how we came to that mission because it is, a, it, it is sort of a unique mission you know, for years, um, the organization is very aware of, you know, our um, competitive communities. So, you know, we work with all the EDC partners, for example, in the community, and everyone is always sort of looking at, well, what does this city have that we don't have? And what are we better at than what they do? So what happens is you sort of establish this compare and contrast mindset. And uh, when we were in a strategic planning session a few years ago, I started to think about what's our differentiator as a brand. And one of the things that kept coming up in my mind was this concept of connectivity. And you hear this phrase a lot about Tampa, we're a big, small town. A lot of people, it's like everybody knows everybody. I can pick up the phone and call Michelle who can make an introduction for me and someone will call me and ask me to go to coffee. It's a really uh, kind, connected market. So I thought, gosh, maybe there's something to that. Maybe if we become a place where talent can come here and immediately find an opportunity or students coming out of you know, college know the narrative of what's so exciting and cool about the market, that that's kind of our secret sauce. So just a little bit of background about sort of how we came to that mission and where I really see uh, that it's resonating. Mm -hmm. So what are the keys to achieving success in your role? Is it 
making those connections for companies like Tech Data? Are there other specific objectives you have on, on growing the awareness of Tampa Bay Tech? What, what specifically is on your plate? Yeah, I, a, a lot, all of that. I think, you know, for me, one of the most, um, <clears throat> one of the most key elements for being successful in this community is having a really active board of directors. Uh, when I say that, I mean folks that are willing to roll up their sleeves and really drive an initiative to the mission. Um, you know, I've been, I'm on boards, I'm sure you've served on boards and there are different kinds of boards. We require a board that is in the community. Uh, they're mostly technologists, C-level technologists, so they know what the issues are. They know sort of where we need to um, put our emphasis. So having a board that is really active is, is cr critical to, to the success of the organization. And for me to feel supported in terms of driving the mission, you know, we're a lean team of two people. So it would be really hard to feel like we're radically connecting everywhere without that. The second piece for me is really keeping a finger on the pulse of our membership. So <clears throat> as I said, this idea of you know, creating sort of touch points with, with the community, they have to be valid, they have to be relevant. So you know, this year I think is a great example of um, making sure that as you know, March and April rolled in and we were all feeling this you know, video call fatigue, exhaustion, whatever you want to refer to it as, that we took a step back and reached out to members, every single member company and said, what could we be doing for you? What do you want to hear about? What would help your business right now? So to me, um, that's really, really important when you serve at the pleasure of a board and, um, and members to be very closely connected to what's, the mo what's most important to them. And I would say the last piece is, is really making sure that we stay <clears throat> aligned with uh, the community. You know, there are a ton of groups like Embark Collective and Synapse and Innovation Center um, doing incredible work, Tampa Bay Wave. And so making sure that uh, we all got really aligned this year in terms of what programming are you building? How can we support you? And how can we not compete either and make sure that mm -hmm. we're all playing the role that we need to play to serve this community best. Yeah, that's great. I was gonna ask you about that because there is some overlap with some of those organizations you mentioned. Is that something where you just proactively reach out to make sure that there, there isn't a competition going on and that everybody's kind of playing nice together in the sandbox? How does that, <laughs> how do you facilitate that? You know, it's interesting. I think everybody in this space uh, was interested in doing that. Uh, you know, I know Lakshmi Shinoy, when she first arrived in the market, one of the things that she did best was reach out to everyone. Hey, let's grab lunch. Let's grab coffee. I want to hear what you're doing. I want to talk about what we're doing. Um, you know, I've known Linda Olson for many, many years, uh, as well as Tanya Elmore. So I think there's this desire to um, to be really strong partners in the community. And, um, you know, when I first came on as executive director, one of the first people I met with and had coffee with was Brian Kornfeld. Mm -hmm. We sat down and said, all right, what are people confused about our brands and how can we change that? And I think a week later, we did a podcast uh, with Catalyst to kind of talk really candidly about that. So a lot of it, I think, was just letting people know that we're not competing, we're, we're linking arms and we're linking arms because we all want this community to thrive. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so we talk about the community, Tampa, St. Pete area. I'm curious as you see it, and obviously you work with a lot of tech companies, as you mentioned, um, are there particular trends that you're seeing or that you're focused on or that your um, companies like Tech Data have mentioned to you that are kind of on the horizon that, that have piqued your interest? That's a great question. And, you know, this year for us, uh, you know, has been very interesting. I think we're seeing a lot of companies looking at um, automation. And what's interesting to us about that is the sort of down the road piece of what happens to your workforce as, as automation increases and making sure that we're looking at, you know, the workforce of the future and new skilling and upskilling um, that has certainly risen to, to the top. I think in terms of, uh, you know, probably one of the biggest um, uh, sectors that we're seeing huge growth in in the market is cybersecurity. 
you know, know before just won our uh, tech company of the year at our award show last week. And um, th that's one area that we were really happy to see growth through 2020 in companies growing, companies hiring, uh, when we saw some so many downturns in a lot of other areas. You mentioned the award show, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Can you give us a, a little bit of history on the award show itself? How long have you guys been doing this? What what kind of categories do you have? Who are you honoring? And how did this year's award show go, given the fact that it had to be done virtually? Yeah, it was very depressing to have to do it virtually. It was our 17th year this year, uh, celebrating the top technologists and teams uh, and companies in Tampa Bay. So we had to get very creative about how could we do a show that felt the same, had the same kind of energy, the same kind of celebratory vibe when, let's be honest, a lot of people are not in the mood to celebrate a whole lot at this moment in time. So being very aware of our tone uh, was important to us. So we, we decided to, you know, just do, do it as, as great a show as we could, keep it fun, keep it energetic. Um, we worked with uh, an incredible partner here in town, Diamond View Studios, um, who helped us put on a show that really felt uh, felt like all those things. Um, we we had several categories that historically we've we've you know uh, celebrated for many years: Tech Company of the Year, Tech Project of the Year, um, Tech Leader of the Year. One of the new categories for us this year that was particularly meaningful to to us was Bridge Builder. And our events team came up with, with this idea that given what 2020 brought to the market, how could we highlight somebody that stepped up? And whether through philanthropy or you know, just giving back, being that person that was like, not my town, we're gonna be just fine. Uh, and that was probably one of the most special awards to not only receive nominations for, but, but ultimately give out that award. And it went to uh, Suzanne Ricci with Computer Coach. And, you know, the other thing that I wanna mention that I thought was so special this year is, you know, usually when people submit nominations, it's very literal. Here's our company, here's the, you know, here's our, uh, our, our revenue, here's the project. Here. This year we saw this really interesting kind of vulnerable storytelling about why this leader in our organization should be recognized because they really got connected with their team this year, made sure everybody was okay. There was this kind of emotional element uh, to the nominations that our judges had never seen before. So again, that to me tells me that we we are a radically connected and very sort of kind and thoughtful community. So we were thrilled to be able to put the show on, uh, albeit virtually. Well, fantastic. And I love, you know, that you're coming out with new categories all the time. It kind of leads to my next question about in innovation and just planning the, for the future and having to change. This year has been you know, hectic for a lot of organizations. I'm curious, you know, you mentioned it's a small shop, uh, two employees. How are you planning for the future? What do you see for Tampa Bay Tech moving, you know, not just one year into the future, but the next five or 10 years? How does the organization evolve? That's a big question, Ben. Let's like 10 years. That's a tough one for me, <laughs> but uh, I will, I, I, I applaud you for asking it. I think, you know, really for right now, um, coming out of 2020, one of the things that we had to really be thoughtful about was, you know, we're an organization that is very events driven. It's a big part of who we are. It's a big part of how our peer councils meet um, and, and a huge part of how we engage with students and the broader community, uh, big tech festivals and things like that. So one of our kind of, you know, metrics has always been attendee numbers. And that's true of most, you know, companies that throw big events. And so one of the things that we had to really shift this year was, um, is that important? Is it, is it just as important to have a, say a peer council session with our CEO group and 12 people around a table feeling you know, safe to be really open about, guys, I don't know if I'm gonna make payroll in 60 days. And really working with our members to listen and hear 
and kind of meet them where they are in terms of what their needs are. So that was a really fundamental shift for us about this is not a metric that we need to hold on to anymore. What we need to hold on to is looking at, uh, looking at a much more intimate way to engage with members. I think as we move forward, looking out a few years, you know, it, it, it is an odd level of uncertainty in terms of, um, you know, we're already anticipating next year to be probably virtual. Perhaps by mid-year, we can do some hybrid type events where we have some small groups, you know, maybe in person. But uh, to me, that, that ongoing challenge is looking at how do we continue to do things on screen that are compelling, that feel authentic, and that feel intentional for our members. So really, um, I can't go 10 years out yet. I think we're, we're sort of in the like, let's stick it to next year and see yeah. how, we, how we evolve and come, come to a point where we feel like we're, we're still meeting our members where they are and providing the value they're looking for. Yeah, I mean, I, I always ask the 10-year question, but I never <laughs> anticipate that anybody necessarily got all the answers, especially given the current environment that we're in. We're in. Just no, knowing what next year holds is, is a mystery. But, That's right. Uh, uh, if you're just joining us out there, you're watching Virtual Coffee with Ben. I'm Ben Blackman. I'm the Director of Development for Ridge. I'm joined today by Jill St. Thomas. She is the Executive Director of Tampa Bay Tech. Uh, of course, if you want more content from Ridge, you can go to our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. Stay tuned for more conversations just like this one every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Well, we were talking a little bit uh, about going virtual. The pandemic is, is on everybody's mind and it hasn't gone away, unfortunately. I'm curious, just from a personal standpoint, how it's affected you. I know you talked about having to change some of your services to go virtual. The award show is virtual. Next year, you're probably going to be going virtual, at least uh, for part of the year, if not a hybrid model. But how have you just dealt with it in your personal life and, and your work life? Um, you know, it, it's been a different journey for everyone. I'm just curious how it's been for you. It's mm, a great question. I, I think for me, um, you know, it's definitely required a, I, I think of myself as a very organized person. I always have, I think people around me would, would echo the same sentiment, but it's required me to be a little bit differently organized in terms of establishing a start to the day, end to the day. It's, it was really easy, especially back in March, April, when I think everybody was really, this was new, there was a lot more unknown uh, to just work constantly. And there are times where working constantly is important and we've all had to do that, um, but, but it's not sustainable for me. Um, you know, I have a, a family that I love and I wanna spend time with and, and support. And so, you know, when we were all here working, I have a, a high school senior, my husband uh, is in technology as well. It, it's tough without setting really good boundaries about here's when I need quiet, here's when we're gonna take a break, Here's who's making dinner, like just kind of all those basic things that sometimes when you go and leave for the day and come back, they feel really different. So part of it for me was establishing sort of better boundaries around here's when I'm starting, here's when I'm ending. Another habit that I um, adopted was starting every day with meditation, which meditation is not really for me as a, as a kind of a type A person, it's very difficult for me to do it, I'll be very honest. But, um, but establishing that every morning, even if it was for 10 minutes to just get quiet and kind of clear my head and get ready, that helped. I do think, and, and I'd be curious what you think about it, there's a really different level of fatigue from the video calls yeah. versus <laughs> going to lunch versus having a meeting at a round table where, I don't know, somehow mentally, I think it takes a really different toll on everybody don't you i absolutely agree and you know we're seeing it in people we talk to in the tampa bay area but also just across the country uh just the mental health aspect of this pandemic has been something that uh, i wouldn't say is necessarily overlooked but something that i think everybody has to pay really close attention to because it's very draining um and especially like you said you have kids in the house you got a lot of things going on just having to manage all of that can be extremely stressful on top of the stress that people have just from their day-to-day -day 
work life. So uh, doing things like meditation, I think is excellent. Everyone's kind of got their own things. I've started to become a runner and I never thought in a million years I would ever run, but I get up in the morning sometime and I go running down by the pier here in St. Pete. And that has kind of helped me with my mental health. But I think everybody has to, to handle it a little bit differently, but it's something that I'm worried that it gets to a break point where you you've just been on zoom all day long you haven't had any face-to-face interaction outside the household and you know you just hope that people can can manage that and handle it before it gets to a point where it's there there are unintended consequences so yeah yeah i think being really honest too something else that occurred to me while you were talking is moments of just pure sadness Mm -hmm. you know as as leaders we're not taught to really lead emotionally like eq people talk about it with their teams but i really do think this year took a different and and a better turn around that so even just checking in with myself there were certainly days where i was like i felt that hopeless kind of like should i even get up you know what i mean and uh you know i have a, a small team it's just two of us but even just you know taking time every week to check in and go how are you doing today? Like, let's, let's take, take off a little early this Friday and, you know, uh, social distance somewhere and, and, you know, Mm -hmm. just uh, celebrate the end of a hard week. So um, that's been really interesting too. And a lot of the sessions that we've done with leaders throughout the year, um, people have talked about that and about how uh, leading their teams in this really unique way and being a little more open and vulnerable um, has really helped buoy them as leaders when they were in their kind of darkest moments too in 2020. Yeah, I think just the open communication, like you said, has been really key, making sure that everybody feels heard because mm-hmm. everyone's dealing with different challenges. And um, sometimes it's it's difficult when you're not face-to-face in the same room to kind of gauge the body language of people. Yeah. Are they down? Are they sad? Um, and it's, it's something that I think, again, going into next year, a lot of companies are gonna have to address um, kind of that cultural aspect of making sure that everybody's still engaged. Yeah. Um, and that's something we talk a lot about with our clients is just making sure that people are still on board, that they're still having fun. Um, right. you know, we try to have breakout sessions where we keep things light, virtual happy hours, things like that. Um, and so th- those things are really important. As you mentioned, the meditation, there's a lot of great apps out there, Headspace, Calm, um, those sort of things I would certainly encourage people to look at as well. So yeah. um, speaking of personal stuff, we like to end each interview with a little bit of get to know you. Uh, we call it the Benny Good Times Fast Five, uh, <laughs> the BGT Fast Five. So just five quick questions just to get to know you a little bit better. We've been talking a lot okay. about the Tampa area. What is your favorite thing about Tampa, St. Pete? Beach. Beach. Okay. Seems you like have a probably beach an answer area? that you get an awful lot, but I actually haven't gotten that answer as much as I thought I would. But do you have oh. a, a particularly favorite spot? Uh, probably St. Pete Beach. Okay. But any of them will do. Really, they're all good. Yeah, St. Pete's obviously all good. the most popular, so you got to deal with the crowds a little bit. But sometimes, always yeah. a great spot. Now, if you had to to leave Tampa, St. Pete, if I'm giving you a free ticket to travel anywhere, I'm oh, curious where you travel. would travel. Money's uh, no object. You can go anywhere you want. Where would you go? Paris. 100%. Okay. Have you been before? I have. Fantastic. I love Paris. I was actually engaged there. So it's oh, a place in my heart. Yes. Um, and hopefully we'll both get the opportunity to go back at some point. Man, I hope. I hope. <laughs> Question three is your favorite movie. Uh, this is always a, a funny one for people to hear because I'm really into sad movies and this is probably the saddest movie around terms of endearment yes it's very sad yeah yeah so is it one that you can go back to often enough or is it just like so emotional that you're like okay once was enough oh no I watch it I watch it probably once a year minimum yeah oh wow okay so love a good cry Ben love (laughs) a good cry it's an emotional year. So anything yes. that can kind of stir those emotions, that's great. <laughs> right. Excellent choice. Now, I, I always ask about secret talent. So if you were put on the stage at a talent show and you had to do something, what would you be doing? Ooh, I don't know that I would do it well, but it's always been a dream to do stand-up comedy. Wow. Yeah. That's a great answer. 
So it's a dream. Have you actually ever like written down any bits? Have you tried some out with the family? Anything like that? Oh, I try them out with the family probably, you know, all the time daily. Um, we're a pretty funny family, I would say my family growing up. So um, uh, there's a lot of sort of wit and humor in the family. But yeah, that would be one of those like I'm terrified to do it. But if I ever got the chance to do it, I, it would be definitely a, a dream come true. That is fantastic. I love that, especially in these times, like we said, you <laughs> got to kind of keep it light and try to have some fun and keep yeah. laughing. Is there any particular comedian that you fashion yourself after or look up to or oh, just gosh. particularly like their style? Uh, I. That's a great question. Tina Fey has always been a huge favorite. I'm also told I, I could be her, her sister. Yeah, I was going to say, you kind of have the look with the glasses and everything. Yeah, so. yeah. So I would say definitely her. When I was younger, one of my idols was Gilda Radner. So I definitely have some some love of funny women, for sure. Excellent choice. That's fantastic. Well, that, that's why I like asking these questions. I'm learning <laughs> so much about you that I would never have guessed. And then Finally, I always like to know who was your, your biggest inspiration or your hero, if you have one. I do. I have many, but I would say that the first person that pops into my mind is definitely my, my mother. Um, you know, she uh, immigrated to the States from Scotland when she was, you know, very young um, and newly married. And she and my father came here. She, you know, was a very sort of prototypical 70s you know, homemaker and raised my brother and I and um, really devoted herself to her family. And then when she was in her 40s, decided that she wanted to go back to college and get her master's degree. And so she ended up uh, going and getting her master's degree from Syracuse University, which is no small feat. And I just always thought, what a courageous moment to be able to, to do that and have that she had a lot of confidence, but a lot of fear, and she did it anyway. So that is definitely something that sticks with me every day. When I'm a little trepidatious about <laughs> something, like you, you got this. You can, you can always do it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, that's all the time we have before we wrap up. Though, I want to make sure it, if there are people out there that want to know more about what you and and your peers are doing at Tampa Bay Tech, where can they go to get more information? Love it. So. Uh, you can follow us on all of our social. We're sort of at Tech Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay Tech. Uh, our website is tampabay.tech or people are absolutely welcome to email me, jill at tampabay.tech. Fantastic. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us. It was such a great conversation. And certainly if you ever do an open mic night, let me know. I will be <laughs> in the front row cheering you on. Awesome. Uh, I want to thank Philip as well for putting the graphic record together. We'll be sure to post this after the show. And again, if you're interested in learning more about Ridge and all things we're doing, you can go to www.ridge.com. That's R-I-D-G. And you can go to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page to learn more about how we're helping companies innovate. Well, thank you again. And we will see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m. I'll be joined uh, by James Olson, formerly of Agile Thought. So we will see you next time.